Hello, fellow educators and students. Today's video will be on Sight Reading Factory from the student point of view. I will do another video that deals with the teacher side of it with a little more information about the program. But today's video is just on using it from a student's perspective. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go into your web browser and then go to sightreadingfactory.com. Your teacher will send you information, so once you have that all set up to go and your account's ready, that's where this video takes over. So, once you're on their website, over here on the top right corner, you will see Login. You want to click on that, and you'll put in your student user account. This account is set as a student for me, so I can show videos like this and also see how the student side works. Click Login. If you have classes that you're enrolled in, you'll see a list of your classes. So I have one set up for the junior, senior, high school band. If your teacher assigns assignments or any of that things, you can go to the assignments tab across here and you'll see a list of all your assignments. You can save uh, sight reading examples for quick retrieval. And you can also view recent configurations of what you've practiced in Sight Reading Factory, which I'll show you how that works in just a few. So I'm going to go back to the Classes tab, which is your main display. So just to get going in it, if you just want to do some practice of sight reading, over here on the right you'll click on the Start Sight Reading. If you're choosing an instrument and you want to see different notes on the page, you can select your instrument. I'm going to show you a couple of different examples. So the first one is if you just want to practice rhythm without having to figure out the different notes, you would choose Rhythm Only. You can choose by ability, and you'll see when I hover over Sight Reading Factory Level 1, it shows what will be included when I go to 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it gets pretty complex in the rhythms and the rest that it shows. I'm a big fan of the custom, because sometimes the abilities aren't quite right for what I want to work on. So in the custom, you click on that. So for example, with my groups right now, we've been working on the whole note, half note, dotted half note and all you do is you click on the rhythm that you want to put in and then you also select the type of rest you want to work with and then you can choose the difficulty if you're picking simpler rhythms the difficulty will not make make much of a difference if you are selecting a lot of rhythms the difficulty will make a huge difference you can choose to have ties in there if you want and syncopated rhythms so I'm gonna just start with that and then I'm gonna hit next you can choose your time signature. Most of the time we're going to just choose 4-4, but as you improve your abilities with sight reading, you can choose more difficult time signatures. You can do a challenge which is time-based, and you can do a free play where it just it displays on the screen and you work at your own pace. I usually use the free play. And then once you're in, it will show you the rhythm on the screen and you can go through and practice your sight reading. When you're done or if you want a different example you'll see this next button in the top right you can hit next and it will use those rhythms you told it to use and it'll generate a whole new rhythm for you to look at. You can set a metronome so there's the metronome. I can change the speed when I hover over it you'll see there's these two little up and down arrows so I can hit and slow it way down if I want and if I hit you'll see the metronome goes much slower and if I click on it again, it will stop. I can hit the play button and it will actually play the rhythm for you. So you get an example of how it sounds. If you want to tweak your settings, you can click on the custom and it'll take you back to the previous screen so if you want to change the type of rhythms you're doing you can select the rhythms and it'll give you another chance to go through that you can jump back to the time signature if you want to go back to the custom or if you want to go all the way back to the beginning where you can choose different instruments or setups for how you want to read you can choose those different things so what I want to do this time is you'll see there's all sorts of choices here so let's say I'm a trumpet player which I am I want to come in and click on brass and then you can choose your instrument. I'm going to choose B flat trumpet. You can give it the note range so if you don't have a real big range especially as a beginner player you might 
click the down arrow for the top note so it lowers down. You can tell the lower note to go super low. So we're going to start with just simple range. You can tell it to put accidentals in there, have dynamics. Um, you can tell it to restrict how big the jumps are. So we're going to tell it max leaps. Um, and we'll just do fifth. So we'll hit next. You can choose key signature or just have it choose from all. And I'm going to select B flat major and then start free play. And now you'll see there's actually notes on the screen. And if I hit play, it'll give you a four count just like before. And I'll play an example on a semi sounding real instrument. MIDI, which is terrible. If you're playing on your instrument and want to play along with the recording, you'll see this little thing over here, and it's a tuner key. And if you click on that, it'll actually play a tuning note for you so you can tune your instrument to it. So we're going to go back. We're going to choose instrument. So we can change if you want to go into bass clef. You can even come back here. You can use voice, all sorts of settings, depending on what instrument you want to play. You can even do ensemble, choose multiple instruments. So we're going to do woodwind this time. I'm going to choose, let's do flute. And then we're going to do start free play. Now, under the settings here, over on the top right, you have a few other options you can choose. There's a zoom, so if you have trouble seeing or your screen's real small, you can tell it to zoom in and out. You can choose how many measures the example is, so if you want it much longer, you can choose up to 24. If you want to keep it really short, you can do just four measures. Now, you can use something called annotations. So you can have it put in the names, so if you're struggling or still working on how to read the note names, you can pick note names. And when I close this out and go to my next example, you will now see the note names are actually included. And this works for all the instruments. So it's a great resource if you want to work on learning how to read the rhythms and the notes. You can do that option. If you want to turn that off, you come back up here and click on your settings again. And you disable annotations. Click X and go to a next example and you'll see that they're gone. So that's the basics of Sight Reading Factory from a student point of view. Now if you go back to your main screen, if you click that SRF icon in the top left, it'll take you back to your main screen. What you can do is you can save different examples, but the one I like is under Recent. It will show me some of the recent sight reading practices I've done. So if I want to go in and practice that same setup, I can just come to this and go right to like I was looking at a level six just to see what it looked like. So I could hit practice and instead of having to go through all that setup, it takes me right to it. So that's really nice. And that is the student view of Sight Reading Factory. Don't forget to check out my site at adamontech.com where you can submit suggestions or follow-up questions to these video tutorials. While there, you can also read my writings that explore a number of topics in greater detail. You can also leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at twitter.com slash adamontech. Don't forget to hit that like button below, and while you're doing that, also take a moment to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with my latest tutorials. So until next time, this is Adam on Tech signing off.